and welcome to Gimmick Cast. This week's gimmick is Weird Decks Are Finally Realized. That came out really badly. Weird Decks Are Finally Realized. I think that's like my slogan when I used to play Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> like my unofficial Maybe. slogan. Maybe, I don't know. I was bought, like, it came out weirder than it was in my head, but you know. We did it. It's fine. Moving on. Right. So, obviously, this is supposed to be a segue to a topic Evil wants to discuss first, which is weird decks. Weird deck ideas. Well, mainly more deck, yeah, deck ideas, because mixing and matching shit in weird ways is kind of fun. Yes. So, Eve... Did you... So, Did oh, you me? I, do I have one? Uh... I'm throwing the I'm throwing the curtain to you first. And then I can get into the two that I've brought. Can I say Jinzo Leia stun? Valid. <laughs> yeah, because if you ever watch the original Jinzo Leia stun, it, it's weird. as weird synergy, I'll give it that. <laughs> it's weird synergy. Uh, I'll bring my idea and then I'll bring Felix's in. Mine is Gimmick Puppet Machina. He's played it. It's not that bad, but it's still a loss to Trimid, so, you know. I mean, I've been still kind of tweaking it. But, you know, it works nicely because, like, you do have some Earth Machine types in the Gimmick Puppet lineup. But also, if you really want to, you can go into Scrap Engine and set up Link Plays. Mm. So. Yes. There's that. Mm. Um... And then the one that Felix made was Altergeist Magic Musket. That is something I don't see working, but somehow it apparently does. Oh, it does. Because the Magic Muskets all... Their effects all fire off on spell and trap cards. Unspecifically. You can play a shit ton of trap cards to get their effects off. But also, trap cards trigger the Altergeists. So... Oh, okay. I have another contender for weird um decks. Yeah. Unchained Gusto. Please tell me that's not a thing. I fought it last night. Okay. It didn't work because most of the Gustos float by battle. So there's only a couple yeah, of Gustos there. I was going to say, that... I yeah. was gonna say that's... <laughs> all the things I've mentioned actually fucking work, so hey. <laughs> And so did Jinzo Leia Stun. Ah, uh, yeah, that was... That was you need an abbreviation for that, by the way. Nah, it's fine as it is. What, do you, what I'm gonna call it? Jizz? Jizz? Jizz, uh... No, I'm not calling it Jizz. <laughs> get, get, get some of this Jizz. Jizz. Yeah. The idea I wanted to bring it up was just how stupid some of these ideas work, but they... They work. And it's not the only time we're going to be talking about stupid decks, because I have a segue into a topic I want to discuss too. Yes, which I also have something to back it up. Okay, yeah, and I have one one more pick for weird decks. Mess! You remember Mess? I remember Mess. Mess was... I liked Mess. Mess is interesting. <laughs> it's probably the closest you'll ever get to a spellbook deck. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing some spellbook support, like actually making the monsters playable, just not more spell card support to make the spellbook engine work. I mean, spell, yeah, because the spellbook engine is kind of just. It's a thing now. Yeah, and, cause, and, need, and I say this need... because Konami has been on actually a rare streak of competence recently with legacy support, as we see with the new alien cards. You're not wrong. That like, was a segue. And like, it's not really—it's just not just like the alien cards, though. Like, a bunch of random um support. Like, the Zexal stuff works. Really Zexal well. stuff was really good. The majestic stuff is absurd. Yeah. So like, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, this is one. Come of those, on, Yeah, this is one of the few times Konami has actually proven themselves to be decent. But yeah, I'm very interested to play around with the new reptile cards. What? The, the, with the new alien cards, because um, a lot of people has a very dismissed Buster, but Buster is really good because the deck does have good ways to put it in the graveyard. On top of that, it's a level four target already, and the Synchro is a level five. 
So, and then yeah. you know how the tuna works, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so it's a really good card that you just send off one of the newer quick plays to dump it, put some A counters on the field. So it's a really just good... So without context, it looks bad. But within the context of the deck, it's a really good card for counter aliens, which they definitely are going to move in with this deck. Yeah, and... I definitely... I mean, counter aliens is already one of the more prevalent strategies anyway. Yeah. So, like, just supporting that strategy is better than trying to do what they did in the past, which is just give them a bunch of shit and be like, here, figure it out for yourself. I mean, in the past, they only gave us a cell recombination device, which also helped counter aliens. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah, but the New Link 3 is quite good. So, yeah, Cosmic Piercer yeah. Zilor. Um, all you need to know is, effectively, one, it replaces Aliens Mars, so you don't need to run Mars anymore for your lockdown. It also allows you to search a card on Link Summon, and also gives you an extra normal summon. So pretty much, it's, a, it's effectively might as well be the new boss monster for Alien. It's really good, easy to summon, thanks to the new Abyss support, that I don't want to admit, yep. but it's actually quite good. And there's also that one Reptilian card you can use. As well as, you can Link Climb from the Alien. Shock Trooper. Yeah. Into this. So. Exactly. So. It's, it's fun. And, like, aliens already have a typing match with the Abyss stuff, so why not just play into it more? Exactly. Yeah, it has synergy with Lamia. Cause, oh, yeah, I remember Lamia. Because it lets you special summon it if all the car, if this card's in your hand and all the monsters you control are face up reptiles. Mm -hmm. So, it's great fit. With the new support in mind, it actually got me to start working on an alien script, which might actually come out before Virtual Beast. I'm not sure. I mean, the alien script would be a lot more interesting than the Virtual Beast, in my opinion. Oh, that was it. That was good because I was about to ask you for your opinion on which one I should focus on first. See, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Our discussion is going. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, but yeah, even. I do like <laughs> the new alien support. It's very fun. I actually might even do an e plays on it before I finish the script because I am very curious to see what we can do with this. Because I haven't touched aliens since I shoved the entity engine into the deck. I mean, here's the thing. I'm kind of sort of working on an abyss engine. So Ooh, we can collab. Yeah, collab it. Why not? Collaboration. Anyway, yeah. let's uh, moving on to another weird support card that I wasn't expecting to happen. Yeah, again, in terms of legacy support, we got one-off tri-mid support. Yeah, the one we mentioned it briefly. And yet again, oh, yeah. without context, yet again, it looks weird, but with the context of the deck, it actually works. So it's quite useful during your turn. So if a field spell is placed on your field zone and this card's already face up, you can add one trimid spell trap from your deck to your hand. Which is actually quite useful because during your opponent's turn, the trimid monsters just let you pop your field spells and play another one. So you're effectively yep. just gonna be searching during your opponent's turn. But I don't think there's not many good trimid targets in terms of back row for this. So uh, this yeah it makes outside the field spell it makes the continuous trap searchable. Yeah that's not too bad. I mean but here's the thing though you the reason you would be adding a Trimid Spell Trap is to just give you some security if your Field Spell is negated yeah. or whatever, so... Yeah, I think with this effect, it just lets you go, okay, let's say you have something like King Golem on the field, but then you can just pop it so you can send Fortress, summon Fortress, because you might have your cards set instead of being on in attack position. And then loading effects goes off, and it gives you cruiser, which is going to be more useful because it will give you. Because on a normal summon, it lets you draw a card and discard a card. Yep. So that's and a really good synergy. And on top of that, it has a protection effect for your mo monsters, which yeah. just when they get destroyed by a battle or a card effect, you can special on one trimid from your deck from your deck with a different name. Yeah. Which is very useful. And this deck of A has Sphinx, which floats on um, trimid destruction, so. You can ultimately plus out of this. Yeah. I I was honestly hoping we would get at least four more cards, mainly in terms of monsters and back row. Because the, the, the archetype only has like four monsters, four spells that are trapped now. You're not wrong. Mm. 
But like, okay, well, let's be fair. The card reveals for Dawn of the Majesty are very slow at the moment because there's like three other packs being revealed as well. Yeah, King's Court. So like, I don't want to talk yeah. about King's Court. That's fair. To be so, to be fair, we could see more Trimid stuff, and they're just teasing it with yeah. loading. Yeah. Because I mean, Konami knows. Konami of late knows what needs support. To be fair, they've been yeah. picking um, archetypes that that need more support and giving them a bunch of monsters and spells and traps rather than just you know being like, ah, oh, we'll pick our favorites and yeah. dump them with stuff, and then just give some one-off support for archetypes. But again, I wouldn't hold it hold your breath for try mid stuff because Konami's Konami. Yeah, <laughs> they make stupid mistakes all the time. But at the same time. I would like to see more Trimid support. Yes, and here's a question for you. Um, who won Creator Card again? Um, <laughs> it wasn't Zectors, was... right? Yeah. Okay, where's our Zectors support card? It's been a year. We got it already. Wait, what? What was it again? <laughs> it was that conti no, continuous spell, wasn't it? Wait, what? How did I miss this? You didn't. I remember you talking about it. It's not even an odd Yu Gi Oh! Pro. Hang on. Where is it? I'll find it. I look up in Zeta, it's not here. Huh? Huh? What the fuck? I remember it being revealed! What? What's happening? Hang on. I'm going to search, it, search for it. Hang on. Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> weird moment on the podcast, we're just gonna. Quickly figure out what's going on with this support card with us. Get link veins. Uh, hell. Um, yeah, no, huh? It never exists. No. No, they did. It's not, it doesn't exist. They put out the poll for spell or trap, but they haven't come back to it. Oh, here you go. A creator card project has concluded with an Insector spell card being released in an upcoming sixty card set. What set has carry sixty cards? Our main sets. And it hasn't been put in the main set yet. Yes. What the fuck, Konami? This is more on TCG uh, Konami at this point, to be honest. I know, but at the same time, still, what the fuck? Oh. Hmm. You think we're gonna forget? I did. <laughs> I mean, we did for a moment. We need a follow I, I swear they released a, a continuous spell. I, there's no new Insecta spells from what I can tell. I know all the Insecta cards off by heart, seeing how much I've been through this. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I I looked in there and I couldn't find a sh piece of insectors. Yep, all five insect cards are still there. Oh, anyway, so while Ethan is very baffled, I want to segue into a conversation topic I want to bring up is, which is, what's an archetype or deck you would never believe someone would say they would actually play or slash main? Because I had this uh, conversation with someone. Hmm? I'm just gonna say, you said main to me last night when you were posing the question, so my answer to this is gonna be completely different. Oh, okay, context. yeah, you can be main then. Because I was talking to this guy last night, we were kind of just talking, and it just kind of came into the part where we asked questions like, oh, what's your like deck you play? I'm like, oh, well, I may be a Time Thief player. I like to put Time Thief in a lot of different decks. Right now, I'm kind of vibing with Dark Lord, you know, the whole place spiel. And then He's like, oh, cool. I play Chronomaly. What? And I was like, I refuse to believe you exist right now. No one no one in the what? world what? would play Chronomaly. I mean, sure, sure, I am. sure, there's a lot of rock support out right now, but what the fuck? Like, okay, let me put it like this. I wouldn't, I refuse to believe this guy to play Chronomaly. Like, I would believe someone would play Trimids because it works quite well with, but there's a lot of good genetic rock support cards right now on top of the new fossil support. So I would believe people would play Trimids. I would believe people would play Gargars. I would probably even believe there's someone who plays Venom for shit and, shits and giggles, because I do that. 
but Chronopoly? That deck, the the whole deck gimmick is rank three and rank six. You can literally play any other deck. That, that... You're wrong. It's you. Make, it's wrong. That's wrong. It's rank four and rank five. I don't care. They have a they, they have a six for no reason. Oh man, can they even make that six? Uh, oh wait, they yes. can. They have soul monolith. But I I just couldn't believe someone would play Chronomaly. Well, that helps me segue into what my answer to this question was. Was it Chronomaly? <laughs> gimmick puppets? No, I would believe someone would play gimmick puppets. That is an. I know someone who plays gimmick puppets. It's the reason why I'm experimenting with Machina in the first place. I would believe someone would play gimmick puppets because gimmick puppets is inherently a more interesting archetype because it's a graveyard rank eight deck with a lot of interesting rank eights. On top of that, it's Dark Machine giving it a lot of interesting synergy, but Chronomaly? <laughs> Chronomaly yeah. is like, you don't, why would you be playing Chronomaly? <laughs> I don't know, that, that's a, that is a weird one. I, I, I really don't know. Yeah, it's the, a... the... <laughs> I just refuse to believe that someone would actually go sit down and say, yes, I do love Chronomaly. <laughs> un 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 unwarranted, just, I love Chronomaly. What? Yeah. I like, I, I can find a rationale for literally any other archetype in the game. Like, oh, you play Melfi? Oh, you must just like really cute things. Like, oh, you play your dramas? Oh, you must hate yourself. But Chronomaly? <laughs> Chronomaly. I would rather believe someone would play Warrocks before I would believe someone playing Chronomaly. Yeah, that's saying something. <laughs> I don't know. I fuck. That's a. That's. I. I just don't know how to respond to any of this. Chronomaly. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just can't get past the fact someone would go, yeah, I play Chronomaly. Chronomaly. I don't know. <laughs> just, uh, just imagine just going, oh, what, what you play? Chronomaly. Chronomaly. Oh, okay, then, uh, that's pretty sick. <laughs> okay, what did he, he would, what kind of reaction, maybe he's just playing Chronomaly for, like, the reaction he would get out of people. Because, yet again. I mean... I don't know. It. I mean, it's at least got a play style to it, but at the same time, I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, well, who likes this? Chronomaly. Fucking. Meh. Oh shit! Oh sorry, I just clicked on something. It's called the confirmed law for variable book, va the value books book ex, and it lists all the stuff that's getting law in here. There's two side stories set in dual terminal though. So we got one about sealing the Fee Dragons, and then the Fee Dragons burning in Purgatory. Oh, great. Those are things I wanted to know. So what's the so what are the Fee Dragons in Dual Terminal Law again? Are we talking, um, is this Ice Barriers? Tristolo. Yeah, Tristolo and that. Why would the ice, Why would they be burning in Purgatory? They're frozen in the ice. Yes, but their souls might not necessarily be in the ice. Anyway, yeah, this is it's quite interesting because there's also apparently going to be law for Contender Witch and Dark Lords. There's yes. there's law for Zeus. There's going to be well, Natalia why... and Noella pass support law. Okay. All right, and you ready for the be the best one out of three? What? Penguin Braves of Law. Oh, great! Perfect. Nice. I, I wanted to know how Penguin Brave became a Dragon Quest character. <laughs> um. <coughs> Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Oh, wait, that's the Link 5, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, cool. I was just wondering what that was. But anyway, that that's it for wait, the... Machina? It, Machina's getting one. Yeah, it's it's 5D lore, I think. No, I'm joking. Machina was 5D, right? No, Machina was never in the anime. It was in the manga. Yes. There we go. See, it is technically 5D. But they are, they, they... Oh, I don't know. One of them did appear in the anime. But that was just Machina Sniper. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then, but yeah. Like, that, that, was, that was just like a... That had really no lore to it. It was more just like, hey, yeah. Well, machine is we now bonded over this, we, we bonded over this card, and then we tore it up when we... Wait, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck? So, on the Yigo org, the main creative deck profiles. I'm just reading this one. Colossal Assault Vision. So it's Ooh. Assault Mode meets Vision Hero plus TG? I mean, no, because the hero stuff can make TG, which you couldn't make in normal Assault Mode. Wait, 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 wait. So we're using a Fusion Archetype to make... Yes. Synchros. Yes, because the Turner is generic. Just move on. I am very baffled at this moment. I will, I will, I will demonstrate it at some point. I don't want to be to demonstrate it to me. I don't want to see it. Fair enough. Um. So anyway. Uh. <laughs> fine. What can we talk about now, Ethan? We're going to talk about Xenoblade, won't we? Yeah, so I'm going to maybe talk about Xenoblade 1. Uh, I'll, I'll probably segue into Xenoblade 2 at a later date. Yeah. Well, later into the podcast, we'll talk about Xenoblade 2. Because I haven't finished the game, so I don't I don't want to talk about my overall opinion of the game yet. But I have finished Xenoblade 1. And I'm going to say this now. As much as I love Xenoblade 2, I think I'm more of a fan of Xenoblade 1. Yeah, as you know, one Xenoblade One is definitely better than Xenoblade Two. Yeah, there's like there's a lot of little things that in Xenoblade Two. I'm like, I'm not a fan of this. Yeah, that. Yeah, well, we could. You know what? Let's do that right now. So Xenoblade Two. My problem with Xenoblade Two is why it does a lot of new things. A lot of those new things aren't fun. Like my main problem yeah. is skill checks. <laughs> skill yeah. checks everywhere. <laughs> I fucking hate the skill checks. Just because there's no, there's no good way of leveling those up outside of sending people on merc missions and hoping their trust goes up. Yeah, or you, and have, then to... you have to use, them. or use them, which is like, ah, I don't want to use these shit blades. Yeah, or you just have to go out your way to do stuff. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna say the gacha mechanic. The gacha mechanic is fine, I guess. Another problem I have going into Xenoblade 2 was the fact that I could just be running in the overworld and then suddenly be aggroed by like a level 90 monster that yeah. one hits me and that pisses me off to no end because it's because there's a point late in the game where you have to go past this unique enemy but yeah, it's also like also in this cave where because of story reasons your blades aren't as effective. Yeah. So you're gonna run past this giant fucking enemy that is just like, yep, great. Yeah, that cave was the, that cave was not the fun part. That was like, <sighs> like compared to Xenoblade One, where Xenoblade One, I was only kind of mad at it at only one point in the game, and it was less bad and more just very intensely bored, which is climbing up the Mechonis for the first time. That was because yeah. going up the Mechonis was a lot of back and forth that I didn't like doing. Apart from that, 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 I did enjoy the story. It didn't. It felt very streamlined. At least in Definitive, Definitive Edition, Xenoblade One is a very streamlined game, which I like. You know, Xenoblade Two, point point. Xenoblade Two is a lot more creative, but at the same time, what it gives up in creativity is well streamlined, a streamlined feel. So it feels a lot more messy. <sighs> Yeah, but that's kind of the problem with that statement, though, is that that's what you're meant to feel about the world, because it really is a very messy experience. Because you look at all the titans and all the landscapes the titans have, it's like, what the fuck? Mm. I'm going from tropical jungle to fucking desert. Yeah. Holy fuck! <laughs> but like, that's sort of unfortunate. Like, unfortunate part of Xenoblade is that's how the world building is, and I wish they didn't incorporate that into the story, which fuck, well, I guess it gets you a better feel of the whole place, but I guess in the same sense, it's like, this didn't need to be part of the story. Mm. Like, mm, 
my biggest gripe was like a few of the side things you have to do that are part of the main story. Like having to go get Rock's core back. And I'm like, why? Why did you have to do this? Make things more complicated than it already was. Oh, yeah. I don't want to go fight fucking bandits. I want to go progress the story. Yeah. I'm most, uh, most going to say this now. Um, if you're planning to play Xenoblade 2, um, word of advice, um, just don't summon any bear blades on Vex. Like, yeah. Just give him Wolfric, which you get for the story, because it is like a crystal call you get during the story. And also, yeah, by plot reasons, you need to give him Vok. But apart from that, don't summon any more rare blades on him. Yeah, it's just so much better to send them on to other characters. Like, even if you summon on Nia, you can at least overclock them onto the characters that actually are better for them. Yeah. Whereas, like, putting them on Rex, it's like, ah, they're dead weight now. Yeah, but yeah, but there is a good reason why you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it for fucking people who actually want to play because a lot of people are trying to buy this game. Yeah, like, and that's why the game costs ninety bucks in real life. Yeah, that was with my discount as well. It was a hundred dollars without my discount. I know. I'm so glad I bought it before the fucking hype came out, and I was like, "Ha ha! Fuck all of you." I mean, the game of A cost ninety dollars on the eShop before this. No, it didn't. Well, it was sixty, but I got it for forty for discount. Well, on the eShop. Yeah. Lucky prick! I paid ninety. Yeah, that's that's my fucking luck for you. <laughs> I can buy cheap fucking games, but I can't fucking do anything else. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <sighs> uh, but... Okay, then I can move on to one of my crimes. My biggest gripe is fucking character design. Like, most of the core cast, cast okay. Oh, you're most talking about the design blades, design. aren't you? I'm going to get into some of the blades. Some of the blades just look fucking ugly. Uh, okay, something I want to bring out about the blades, because I thought, when I found this out, I thought it was a very cool and interesting idea. So pretty much each blade was designed by a different well-known artist in the RPG scene. Which I thought, yeah. yeah, it kind of screws with the theme of everything, but I thought it was very cool. Because, yet again, you know it gives each blade a unique feel. Yes. But do you know to know why they did that? Why? Because they wanted to separate the, the real world from the blades, because they're technically built from imaginations. So they tried to make oh. them... That's, that's a very that's, interesting... Ooh. Like, that's the reason, and I hate that they did it that way. Like, I'm not saying that any of the artwork that the people actually drew was bad, but, like, when translating them to 3D models, they get a fucking iffy. They get a bit iffy. Mm. Like, you look at, um... Nim. What's her name? The Newt. Newt. Yes. But you look at any of their character arts, and then you look at the 3D model, and you can just be like, yeah, that just doesn't. Newt's 3D model scares me because she has the eye on the back of her head. Yeah, she does. Oh, I was like, why is that there? <laughs> like, uh, there's just no uniformity, and I understand why they did it, but I just. I just wish they didn't. Hmm. I'd rather have a uniform looking game than have. That. I don't know, I think at least, it... At least transition, like, here's my another thing though, like, at least transition the art into the game's art style, then make them blades, would have been better. But like, it's just, uh, I just don't like, I just don't like it because it doesn't translate well at all. Yeah. But that's my biggest gripe. Yeah. Like, outside of lip syncing, but like at the same time, for the English voice actors had very limited time to get no the, the the English version had a little less time to get that right hmm. because the game was like rushed over to them and be like, yeah, we need you to dub and reanimate everything, and it's like I, we can't do it. Anymore. That's my other gripe, is fucking lip-syncing. 
but eh, it's it's not the worst thing. Hmm. Yeah. But outside of that, everything else you gave it was very much valid criticism as well. Yeah. Don't get like, me it's wrong. A good, it's, a, it's a good game and it's worth picking up, but like, oh, yeah. not worth picking up now because of the price spike, but... I can't believe I bought during a price spike. Like, you, it's worth picking up at some point. Like, it is a fun RPG and it's definitely mm. one that I love because I do love the blade mechanic as much as the blades don't look that great most of yeah. them. But, yeah, I'm going to say this now. Um, if you want to get into Xenoblade Chronicles... Start with one. While two has very minimal tie-ins with um, Xenoblade One, outside of that one moment that I will, you know, I'll talk about afterwards. But Xenoblade One, because it, just because it's a more streamlined experience, I would honestly just tell you play Xenoblade One first. Yeah, and not to mention, like it gets you used to the battle system, whereas yeah. like. Xenoblade 2 has this problem of just not teaching you everything. Yeah, like not telling you that about limited overdrives so that you have to find in the overworld. I yeah, hate the fact there's a limit on that. Like, not to mention, like, they only briefly mentioned that bonus XP is a thing and you need to go fucking sleep at an inn. That fucking infuriated me because I spent, like, hours grinding and then I get there and I'm like, fucking... 12 levels higher because I'm like, you, you, you fucking cunt. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, my... There's two things I want to just talk about about Xeno is one, playing through out playing Xenoblade, I'm gonna say it now, because you know how I said my favourite JRPG series is Pokemon, right? Yes. I'm changing my answer. I'm gonna say now Xenoblade is my new favourite JRPG series now. Yeah, I, I just mean, I, love the world anyway. See, the thing is, Pokemon was never my favorite, but like, to be honest, I'm losing faith in Pokemon, and like, it's falling down my list. But at the same time, my favorite JRPG series is definitely Fire Emblem still because <laughs> those games know what they're doing and they do it well. Oh, but God. at the same time, Xenoblade's experience is also very fun. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna... so it's definitely on my high end. I gotta say this now, Ethan. Just be happy you're not on the SA Smash Discord. They 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 really don't like Fire Emblem. For a very valid reason, because Sakura can't just stop putting. Fire oh no 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 no! It's because there's like certain individuals that keep talking about Fire Emblem. He's gone to the yeah. point where they make memes about how much they hate Fire Emblem talk. See, I don't talk about Fire Emblem often because, like, I didn't even know you really like games... Fire Emblem. <laughs> I like it; it's one of my favorite JRPGs. But like, I don't talk about it a lot because guess what? It smells. Every... No, it's not a game you talk about. The each and every person's experience with it is different. It's not a game where you share your experiences, unlike Xenoblade, where you can be like, "Ah, oh, I got this person at this point." I can... I did this instead. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not a discussion-based game. Look, another discussion-based community, I want to say. So I'm like, eh, you guys are fucking horrible. I wouldn't even take, treat my my wife's enemy with me talking about Fire Emblem. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I tried to get into three, blocks, three houses, and then I just went, oh god, this is not for me. Yeah, it's a very tedious game. Yeah. I do understand. Like, it's a fun system and all that, but there is a lot of pad in between. Mm. So people like me who can sit down and work and wave through padding in a video game will enjoy Fire Emblem a lot more than those who are like, I have to do this now, I have to do that now, fuck. At least it's not like. At least it's honest about what the fuck, what the fuck type of game it is, because hmm. it's not like, hey, yeah, come play this action RPG, <laughs> and then it's just mainly talking. I'm looking at you, fucking what's it? Yeah, but Kingdom Hearts Three. <sighs> there we go. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it comes down to something up is that the fact that I I want to play the rest of the I want to play the other Xeno games now. 
I know they're not part of Xenoblade Chronicles, but now I'm just kind of interested in Monosoft, well, other t offerings as a title. Yeah, I definitely think so too. Um, I just, I just really enjoy Xenoblade Chronicles because of its lore. Like it's such a fun series. Yeah. And uh, something I also want to talk about is um, there's a certain point in the story that made me go, what the hell? And I, I honestly should have expected it coming because Ethan beforehand told me Xenoblade 2 does have very minor tie-ins in, tie into Xenoblade 1. So I was yeah. looking forward to like just something like um, the archetype's real identity being a Xenoblade 1 character. And then, and then you meet Malos. I'm like, oh yeah, well he's pretty cool. And then you see his weapon, and I go, what the, f what, what, what? That looks like a certain weapon that I'm not want to say. And then he so straight up says something, and I go, oh no, it really is. Oh no, what, what? Please don't tell me. <laughs> I was just like, I, I'm not mentally prepared for this. Yeah, welcome to. Welcome to Xenoblade. Um... It, it actually made me start thinking of a theory about Malos's real identity. <laughs> it's not what you think, no. Oh, so it's not, you know, I, I'll tell you after the recording what I think Malos's real identity is, but... Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not what you think. I, I know this because I know what the DLC holds. So... I know the truth. If you oh, know. so is, is it... Don't tell me it's explained in Golden Country. I don't want to play Golden Country. It's not explained in Golden Country. But you, it it kind of reveal, they kind of reveal exactly what's going on in Golden Country. So it's like it's okay. Difference between explaining and showing, sort of thing. Like it doesn't explain. Like ah, it's kind of annoying because like fucking Xenoblade Chronicles and their tie-ins and just it's weird. It's complicated and weird, and I'll explain it later. Um, but also... Hmm. Hmm? Uh... Oh, Bob. Yeah, well, he just does his speak think moment. Uh... Um, yeah, um... Fucking... Hang on. It's... No, it's not the one you think it is. There we go. It's not the one you think it is. Like, it is... I want to say copy is the great best word for it. Hmm. So, it, no. Yeah. But also, it also plays into my the to the theory, which has still not been proven by Xenoblade Chronicles, that that it is a, bl a blade. And I'll explain it, that theory more later on the track because I, no spoilers. I actually just want to check a spoiler warning now, and we just go into it. Oh, what, what are we don't what 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 are we talking about? Uh, the blade that Malice has. Oh no, I don't want to talk about that. I I'm I'm gonna wait for it to, if they talk about it in the story. Okay, fair enough. Okay, good. Because I'm yet again, I might be sidetracking because after everything that happens between chapter eight and chapter nine, like the end of chapter eight and the starting of chapter nine. Just made me go. Oh my god! I I just need to take a break from the main story for a bit. Just like a lot of things happened there. Like I'm not I'm not afraid to spoil this. It, it, the, the ship the, the the ship that Torna uses the fake Torna. Um, it just casually turns into a robot for some reason. Yeah. And I was like very confused. <laughs> but. Well, I'm not because guess what? Where do you th how do you think the Mechons? Why did you think the Mechons exist? Stop saying things. <laughs> yes, it's it's the no, same really. premise, just not needing a pilot for. Well, I guess a pilot, but you know. No, I'm just no. Stop saying things. I don't want to know this anymore. <laughs> so anyway, um, really onto a topic that isn't see played, and I decided I thought we should just briefly bring up is um. Their new big new series of skins for League has be is coming. Well, it's on the PBE. There's going to be a two part series of skins, believe it or not, because the new champion, who is actually um, people, I think he's Isod, 
which is the Ruin King's wife, might be revealed in part of this skin wave. But I okay. want to talk about more about the skins itself because I think it's a very interesting theme. So, this arc, so the new scheme skin theme is called Space Groove, and it's pretty much which set is... in a galactic world where it, the, everyone believes in the three gods of Groove. I like them. They're like very like retro '80s spacemen. I know, it, but like the Blitzcrank Legendary is very funny because they're just two cats. And the the one yeah, who's no. piloting the main mech is like, yo, we must destroy the groove. No the groove. groove. And then and then and then his little companion is like, why can't, why do we need to destroy the groove? I like groove. I like groove on the move on. Yeah, but I thought it was like very interesting. Like, yeah, here's an eighties theme, but we're also gonna make it about dancing and groove. I'm like, oh my god, this is And then you actually look at it and it's like this is probably one of the most well-designed skin lines they made. It doesn't. Oh, absolutely! This skin line is fucking awesome. It doesn't feel like cheap, like Star Guardian or Battle Academia. This is definitely one of the more unique skin lines that I like. I I feel like there's a lot more effort put in this compared to their other skin lines. I could literally mention anything, and it would be probably be less original compared to this. Yeah. But yeah, he's like if you're looking at these skins, it's quite amazing. Oh, that new new and Willop skin is cool. But yeah, like all, I like all of these fucking skins. I know right? it's just oh, it's yeah. I'm gonna probably leave a link below to so you can look at these first eight skins because this is the new major event. So we're gonna get another set of skins after this set released. But oh my god, it's. <laughs> Yeah. It's fucking cool. It, it, yeah, I I could actually see myself playing this arc like the, with these skins, especially because there's a Lulu one, so. But yeah, it's... I mean, I, I don't mean any of the characters. You don't even like, play League. Like, you said you don't like League before. I don't like League, but at the same time, it's like, these are all really nice. Yeah, it's a really cool thing they got going here. <laughs> Wait, what, what is this Space Crew Smears like, like quote here? Is a groovy, thrill seeking bodyguard and elite warrior of the Hot Tub Nibbler. <laughs> the Hot Tub Nibbler. <laughs> I, I, I love that already. The Hot Tub Nibbler. Samir took a job directly from the Free Party Goddesses to save Lux from impending invasion from the normal world. Now, as the pair liberate planets across the galaxy, Samara must do everything in her power to keep Lux safe, both from Lysandra. Wait a minute. Lysandra didn't have a skin revealed in this. Hey, they accidentally spoiled the next skin. And Lux's own lack of self-preservation instinct. But I just like the fact it's like, it's the hot tub nebula. And there's three party goddesses, and they're trying to stop people from making them normal. That's really cool. <laughs> I love all of this. This is great. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, it brings out Lissandra a lot, so it might be the next Legendary skin might be Lissandra. Because when they do an really? event like this, they like to have two Legendary skins. So one Legendary skin for the first wave, and then second wave has another Legendary. Yeah. Space oh, Groovy. Pet Blitz and Crank are cats. Cat Planet. Cat Planet is a thing. Was fishing a planet called Cat Planet. Mm. Oh, and they're trying to take over Dog Planet. So, in the Hot Tub Nebula, we have established there's a planet called Cat Planet. There's a planet called Dog Planet. There's also apparently a planet called Boogie Wonderland. <laughs> I love these names. And then we establish there's a normal world. Oh my god, this is this is great. That's all I can think. Fucking Space Jam, but disco. Yeah, oh my god, these... Oh, I'm sorry, I, I could just look at these skins all day and say I love them. This is a really great theme. I don't think... I don't think League has another... had not has such a great, well, theme it's... since... Yeah, yeah no, I, yeah. I think this is like the best theme ever. I don't think, but you know what? I, this I wanted to segue into this because here's the thing. 
But we do have technically a Super Sentai theme in the form of Super Galaxy. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, the whole gimmick is the fact they have mechs. Yeah. Yep. But here's the thing. Why don't we have a Kamen Rider theme yet? Uh, because Koreans. Koreans don't like Kamen Rider? No, they have their own thing. Oh. Uh, I mean, the thing is, we've already got something that's surprisingly close to it, but I would say it's more Power Rangers. Because there's, um... There's yeah, the so, FPX skins, I mean, which... I would like that. Have you seen the FPX skins? For I League. believe I have. Yeah, because they they yeah. they they went for the mask look, which is very cool looking, but it looked closer to Power Rangers than anything. Yes. So ever since they like revealed those skins, I've just been craving for a Kamen Rider theme. I mean, Kamen Rider is such a great, like, it's oh, such a great like fucking idea for a lot of things, but I'm surprised that not many people have picked up on it. Yeah, cause... because like let's be let's be fair, like if I got a skin for hey, just to have a let's just go back to Xenoblade for example. Yeah. If I just had a a blade that's themed around Kamen Rider, like hell yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. You could make it a knock. You could make it a knuckle and have it be an attack roll. Yeah. Like it's just a great idea. So many things you could do with that. Hmm. Yeah, but, yeah, I just, that's just something I want to be on, like, why don't we have a Kamen Rider kind of inspired skin series yet, but, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I just saw a picture. It's comparing um, FPX, FP, yeah, it's FPX. FPX Gangplank to the Red Ranger from Super Mega Force. It's uncanny. It's it's actually uncanny. <laughs> we just... <laughs> Great. I love this. Uh, oh, I'm just gonna put it here, so, so just so you can see oh. it. Speaking of Kamen Rider, can I mention this yes. week's episode quickly? Yes, you can. Um, this week's episode we had the fucking reveal that was not really a reveal that one of the dead characters has come back with the Sword of Darkness. Um, don't do the Kingdom Hearts thing. We all acknowledge this. Um. But here's the thing, he comes back with a new goal that's very interesting. He's going to seal all the sacred swords. Mm. Rather than, um, whatever the fuck Master Legios is doing. Mm. I still I don't even know what the fuck his goal is. Um, but yeah. We have one more sword to be revealed as well. So. Mm. So... Um, just to quickly end this off, they just announced the next um, booster pack set. Burst of Destiny. Wait, hang on, what? Burst of Destiny. OCG release date is July. Burst of Destiny. We'll have new cards for popular old themes as well as new themes. Burst of Destiny. I'm just going to go on a, I'm going to go on a limb here. And say Destiny is getting Destiny so Heroes Court. Either that or some one of the shows that mentions Destiny. Yeah, but who could be the burst part? Uh, well, Blue Eyes, Burst Stream of Destruction, or any of the Eyes. Oh, oh that could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Viral burst. They finally combine Red Eyes, Odd Eyes, Blue Eyes. Into, into a cohesive strategy. <laughs> that would be actually yeah. weird because one archetype is rank up. seven, the other archetype is uh, rank eight, and they add galaxy eyes on top of that. Yeah. It's a rank eight and seven deck. Man, I can't <laughs> wait for them to also find a way to fit in the cats from Yu Gi Oh! Sevens, the dragon cats. Fuck a dragon cats. Oh Fuck. my god. But if this actually has Destiny here support, mark my word. There will be a new version of Disney Hero coming at your screen soon as it's available. I know you will. Yes. That's the problem. That's what scares me. Yes, he knows I will be consistent. I will bring the groove. I'm sorry, I just I got that I got that skin theme stuck the in my head now. The groove. The groove. It's such a cool such a cool archetype, Jesus. No, sorry, it's a such a cool skin line. 
I, I'm actually going to quickly check if there's any other skin line that could top it. Because I'm, I'm betting there won't be in terms of how good no. this is. No, it's pretty good. Yeah, let's see. Going by universe, uh, let's see. We got, well, we got Bowcast, which is kind of just like boring robots gone evil kind of thing. Um, there's Bow Queens, which is quite interesting. Pretty much, it's like six kingdoms with six queens, kind of just used to have fight, and now they're kind of just made an alliance. Uh, Blood Moon is culty demons. Crime City, who cares? Oh wait, no, there's one, one fiend that tops it. Right? Culinary oh, wow. Masters. Ah, yes. We can't forget the chefs. Yes. <laughs> be mainly because Birdio is a thing. Which is Galio in a chicken suit and he sells you KFC. Yep. There is no way to top that. Yeah, there you go. I remember this one. I remember this was one of the things you said when you first introduced me to League. Yeah, you want to play Birdio? <laughs> Birdio is stupid. Oh, right. There's also Baker Pantheon. Yeah, yeah, you know that God of War? Yeah, he's a baker. Um, am hiding gothic. Oh no. I'm, I'm, yeah. Um, I think the only one that comes close to um Space Crew's awesomeness is Odyssey, but Odyssey also has like a whole space theme going on, which is a very it's Odyssey is closer to um. Let me. It's more of a Guardians of the Galaxy kind of theme though with Odyssey. Yeah. Which I mean, it's not it's not a um bad thing, but like yeah. Yeah, and then let's see, you got Psyops. Pulse Fire, yeah, if you like Time Cops, I guess. Yeah, Time Thieves look better. Yeah, Time Cops. Star Guardians, who cares? I mean, if you like that theme, good for you. I don't. Um, there's a theme. Every cool pals are play played. We all know this. Hmm. Um, there's actually lore skins based on if the Wound King was able to actually spread the Black Mist, which is actually quite a cool, cool skin line, but not really that interesting in practice. Like, the, car it, the cards are cool. Like, I'm getting my stuff mixed up. It, the skins are cool. The, skins. the idea behind it, not so much. But yeah, no, I don't think there's a theme that can top um, Space Groove in terms of its lore. Unless you That's really fair. like your more edgy lore of like project and that. I don't like. I like some. I'll admit, I like some edgy things, but like, edgy lore is not one of them. Yeah, I mean, project is just Cyberpunk seventy seven before Cyberpunk seventy seven existed, and then you got like a bunch of like cosmic entities fighting out against the Dark Star, and then ugh, it's not that interesting, in my opinion. There's not a lot of interesting no, it's stuff. Like, it's like why I don't really follow the lore of um, Devil May Cry that far, that closely. Yeah. Because that's, like, is Devil May Cry is cool, but, like, let's be fair, the lore is just kind of, eh, whatever. Yeah. So I now know what we're going to call this um, episode. What? Grooving to Chronomaly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we could just change Chronomaly to Aliens. Oh, we'll do both. Oh, groovy yeah. to Alien Chronomalies. Damn, yeah, that that <laughs> yeah. really be confused. Like... Yeah, that's gonna confuse a shit ton of people. But also embodies what the first topic of the episode was as well. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could... Oh, I, <laughs> I still can't believe someone will play Chronomaly. I'm sorry. I can't either. I wish you didn't mention it <laughs> again. <sighs> Konomaly. Hey, I play Konomaly. There's no one. Isn't... Actually, let's think really hard. What's an other archetype on the level of Konomaly bad? I don't think there is Because, like, when archetypes were introduced, they were in, um, Zac um, GX. They also had, like, those one-off decks that just did nothing. You know what? So, like... Here's another one I wouldn't believe someone would play. Miss Valley. Outside of Apex Avian. Valid. Or oh, those are the that fields where they got limited. Apart from that, no, nah, you cannot convince me. That that's very valid. It's because at least every other deck has like something interesting to it, but what Miss Valley is a, a shitty bounce gimmick that you can do in other hug types and then well Konomaly. Yeah, I mean Miss Valley would have been okay if Magispectus was still a thing. 
Uh, you know what? I would even believe someone who play like that rank nine deck about the the space deck, the one that some summons Dyson Sphere. Yeah, I mean that actually is actually a valid playstyle now because of all the the level nine support. Stuff. Yeah, but what does Quinn normally have? Fucking nothing. Exactly. Like it has some plays in a combo line, but at the same time, it's like it doesn't end anywhere. Like it goes to like maybe the number number six, which is the rank six, and it's yeah. like cool. Now we're here. Anyway, <laughs> um, we, we should end this here. It's fifty-five minutes in, and I've been wanting to go for a shit since the ten-minute mark. So <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying my best to not show. But it's it really, really getting a bit painful here, so um, plug your channel, Ethan, while I continue to suffer in pain here. Um, I'm at Stampy and Co, and I will be hopefully finish editing the first episode of Wiki Fight Club, but Gilkey did kind of made it hard, hard on me mentioning so many different fucking things. Oh, you got another episode of Eddie. Ooh, I can't wait. I do like that series. I, I might a pop up for the next episode. Yeah. Um, I should kick my ass into high gear and um, probably do some research for my pick. Oh well, my! My whole thing now is I'm probably gonna do it bi-weekly just because of how fucking annoying it is to source like clips of certain things. Yeah, especially when you're bu as busy as you are with uni. Yeah, with uni and shit. But like, thankfully, I have Mondays now because the lectures finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do have a bit of time. Yeah, but. Yeah, um, on my channel, well, mainly yet again, the big focus on my channel right now is going to be streaming. I'm going to be streaming one more league game for the meantime, because I need to get, I want to get one more stream of Malzahar. And then I'm going to be streaming myself editing the Malzahar montage, or as I've been calling it, the anticlimactic Malzahar montage, because Malzahar is not exciting. <laughs> And then, apart from that, I'm going to kick my... I'm going to probably, for even suggestion, focus on the A and videos that will be out after the montage. And then maybe after that, Ritual Beast. Yes, I'll even help with the Alien video if necessary. Yes. I'll... I'll yeah, because I did mention you in the Vashtal video, briefly. Yeah. Because I, mean, I was like, yeah, because... That's, cause that's as, fine, just... Yeah. Just, like, if you need help with deck ideas or help yeah. with deck things, just... Yeah, because I was like, because in the Vastal video, I was like, oh yeah, as Ethan has painfully reminded me, Climax Finale does lose to the almighty Spirit Shackles. <laughs> that it does. Yes. Um, also, I guess, because um, Ethan brought up Wiki Fight Club, I'm going to say this now, I might as well promise it now, I will be in the next episode of um, the, that Wiki Fight Club. Yes, we'll yes. organize a record day. Yes. Like, you know I, can what? Record, I can record these endlessly, it's just getting them edited and down. And making this easier on you, I'm going to tell you right now who's my pick. Oh, go ahead. It's Godzilla from Shin Godzilla. Okay. Cool. I, I didn't want to just do Godzilla in general, because then you have to go all over that the would, place. That would be so much of a And pain. there's like so many incarnations of Godzilla. It would be very hard to be consistent, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna go with Shin Godzilla because I think it's the most interesting interpretation we, of Godzilla we have ever had. Because if you've yeah. seen Shin Godzilla, it's much closer to the older Godzilla movies with its in terms of how metaphorical it is, and I yeah. also do like the idea. And also, when I was looking into it, there's also some interesting stuff that I didn't even make in the movie. It's more like concept art. So yeah, I yeah. I, well, that's, I'll... Actually, that's a good idea. I will to see what the next episode is. Yes. It's uh, Shikamaru versus the protagonist from Astral Chain. Woohoo! I need to still play Astral Chain. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm meaning to stream it now that I got a capture card, but like, yeah. I just haven't had time to go stream it because like I'm like, hey, I got other shit to do. Yeah, I I might also occasionally stream Blue Tower's Defense because the new hero in Blue Tower's Defense is amazing. It is. It's fucking great. Oh, you play. You played it with her too, Savada. Yeah. Oh my god. I used to say Itini's my favorite one, but my only downside of him is the fact he's French. But Savada yeah. is just really strong on a lot of maps. Yes, she is. She's, she's 
fucking insane. I'm like, I'm sitting here like, I play this casually. I look at it and I'm like, holy fuck. She's like, she's like essential if you want to do chimps on, on balance, the new map. Yeah. Like, just get her. Yeah, get her. There's no other monkey. In the, there's no other monkey you need. Just, just her. Yeah, get Sarada, and then the only other one you probably all need is Brickwell for like the couple maps that have a big focus on water, aka the dam. The dam. Da, 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 Did you know you can actually da, da, da. flood the other half of the map? You can. It's weird. I didn't even know that was a thing until someone mentioned it. I'm like, oh, okay. I always thought it was what we gonna do with the rest of that space. It's like, what are we gonna put there? Shit ton of mortars? <laughs> yeah. Just like put uh, a whole line of mortar towers, each covering the, that whole track in explosions. <laughs> that would be fucking funny. Yeah, but. Yeah, okay, I guess we should stop stalling of any of the tour. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of Gimmick Cast. Remember, all our channels and other stuff are linked in the description if you're curious. I would really recommend you go check out Eva's channel, because he does upload content more frequently than I do, and it's far more interesting. Uh, well, it's not going to be as frequent as it used to be, because that was just a shit to the form where I could just keep pumping out with no effort. Yeah, and but, still you know. more frequent than me. That's true, but get we'll get there. And if you want to catch me, you can always catch me at my Twitch channel, which will be linked in the description. Yeah, and I will be on my Twitch channel at some point. Yes. Probably during the break week. Yep. But anyway, thank you for tuning in, and goodbye. Goodbye.